Well hello there my name is Scott Reed of the Scott Reed Project and today I want to show you how I deal with a wonderful haunch of venison. So what I've got here then is a whole set of legs which I've taken off the carcass. The first job we're going to do is split these in half so we can work on them separately. So today I'm going to be using a 12 inch steak knife and a five inch boning knife and of course the good old meat saw. So easy, get your knife in, just through the center and we want to pick up the backbone down to the tail and just with our saw gently, not too much pressure saw through to split them. Now doing it this way will make it a lot easier to work on as we begin the boning process. So what have we got? One whole leg as you can see split through the pelvic bone and the tail and that obviously is the horn chair our top side our silver side our thick flank we've got a shank here lovely shank and then here is what we call the chump it's basically the equivalent of rump steak so to start with just trim off that flap. If you put one finger by the pelvic bone, put your knife there, slightly angle it towards the tail and just cut through again with our saw. And as soon as you've gone through the bone, the pitch will change, stop, go to your knife and cut through and that gives you that lovely rump. So next, one of my favorite cuts is the shank. If you can see there, there's just a little bit of movement. That's the patella, the knee joint in there. So just feel for it with your knife. Through, nice and square, across. We take off that shank, so through that Achilles. Holding it, saw, can be quite difficult to hold. Get a firm grip. Beautiful. Let's get rid of that bone dust. Through. About two or three inches down. Scraping with the heel of your knife. As you can see that membrane is coming away. Cut through that. Any stragglers. And then we pull that off. And that gives us those lovely venison shanks. So just taking out any blood meat, any fat, any vessels, point of your knife. And you can see part of the pelvic bone there. Just with the tip of your knife just follow the bone down it's almost like a quarter of a circle as you can see I'm going round and down always move the meat to you don't get dancing round it 
you just take it off the bone like that and we're left with that lovely rump so we can square that off and we can deal with that later so on to the star of the show then we've got what we call in the trade the h bone the hip bone quite an odd shaped bone but again just the tip of your knife start it off now this has actually got a ball and socket joint where the femur goes into the pelvis so just nice and gentle and if you can see in there you'll expose the ball and socket so get the point of your knife in nice and gentle pushing away with the other hand as it comes free and then just gently Father the bone down. And then cut it off. So our haunch then is made up of three subprimals. You've got the wonderful top side sits there. The thick flank or the knuckle sits there. You can almost see that. And then across the bottom we have our silver sides. Now we can leave it on the bone or we can take the bone out completely but what I like to do is to break these down into mini roasting joints. They're more user friendly, more cook friendly. You haven't got to cook a big hulking haunch. You can take these joints off, tie them up and they cook real quick. Absolutely great way to do a haunch of venison because if you weigh it up really each of these subprimals would cook at different times so it makes sense take them off keep them whole and roast them that way so to start with then we want to take the top side off and the thick flank now it's pretty much got a road map as you can see there that is the seam we are going along so just start the seam off i know it looks a little bit invisible what we're going to do is we're going to go down until we hit that femur, that thigh bone. You may just see it appearing now. Again, always just with the tip of the knife. No pressure, especially with venison, you don't need it. So just breaking through. Just follow it. Nice and gentle and then you will hit the natural seam in there so we can continue our cut and that gives us subprimal number one the flank and then on to the rest nice and simple easy bone to take out the femur and that leaves us with our top side and our silver side connected so what you need to do is if you just gently with your fingers a bit of help from the knife just separate it So there wasn't actually a, not, a lot of knife work involved there. We basically pulled that apart. So I will show you that again on the other side. So our top side sits there. Our silver side's there. So if you can imagine that is your top side. Turn it over. There is your seam. You can actually go there just to help you along if you want. So think of that top side so get your hands in get your fingers in just gently ease it along like before just cut through there and then here you can see where it's just hanging on so that's our silver side that's the salmon cut so just easing it 
and it's joining that cut I made on the outer. And there we go again. Silver side, top side, and flank. Now what we need to do then is we'll work on these individually. It's entirely up to you. You can keep these whole as mini roasting joints, but I like to get these prepared for roasting and then get wonderful, wonderful prime steaks out of the top side. So as you can imagine then, that doesn't need a lot of work doing to it. One beautiful solid muscle. Always, always square stuff off, nice and neat. You can get the tip of your knife in under there, just get rid of that skin. Nice and simple. Then with our steak knife, not too thick, we can cut our steaks. There's one, two, three, and four. What I like to do is just turn that over. Now you'll notice there's a bit of a flap there now it's entirely up to you you can take that off or leave it on i'm going to take it off it just tidies that steak up a bit and then same with this one that obviously goes into mince no waste it can even go for tacos or chili for heaters because that's a real prime piece of meat so just into match sticks be wonderful and a little strong enough so absolutely no waste so next I'm going to work on one of my favorites the thick flank or the knuckle so what we need to do first is get rid of the kneecap the patella very simple hold it just straight down we can trim the meat off that go into sausages burgers mince whatever but yeah this is one of my favorites now in america this is called the football roast we just got to do a little bit more work to it but it is an absolutely cracking piece of meat so what we need to do then real simple with this is just get your thumb and your finger in just taking off that muscle Nice and gentle. That's the beauty with venison. You can almost do the butchery with your fingers. Of course, that won't go to waste. That will go in trim. And basically, just square it up. Wonderful, wonderful cut of meat. So this doesn't really need a lot doing to it now. Just a few strings or if you can get them these wonderful poultry bands just makes it super super quick to do get these online and that to me is one of the best little roasting joints just squaring it off just to make it look super neat but yeah what a wonderful little thing that is. Finally then, we are on to the silver side. Basically, it's just a tidy up job. So take that muscle out there. Just skimming that fat off. And this silver side is made up of two muscles. We got the flat and in there we have the salmon cut I've got two I'm going to show you what I do there's not a lot in it just with the tip of the knife taking that off a little bit of silver skin in there nice sharp knife as you can see just down not too deep take that off and then we just need to get rid of that silver skin there so with the knife again no pressure just 
tracing along the top of that silver skin until it falls away and then we take it off again always tidying up so square it off and there we have another cracking little mini roast good old poultry bands again just to hold it in place so it cooks nice and even and with the next one I'll show you how we take the salmon cut off you could cook that as you would a steak treat it as you would maybe a little bit of fillet steak it's nice and soft nice and tender Put one on there and get one on the end. Just move them along, square them up, square that off. That can go into the stew. Wonderful. So the next one then, same as before, tip of the knife, take out that, what they call the mouse's ear. Taking that bit of fat off in between the flat and the salmon cut. Then the salmon cut basically has got its own seam. So just using your finger and if you need to help it along, you can with your knife. Just take that fat off. So you've got a lovely little cut of meat there. Wonderful. And then back on the silver skin on the other. Nice and gentle as you can see my knife pointing outwards. Get rid of that. Hard to grip with these gloves. And then gently again across the top of that silver skin. Square it up. Now you can band that again with the poultry bands or some string, or you could actually cut it in half and have it as two decent parves. Isn't that wonderful? Right, all that remains then is all the trim needs to be sorted out. So any that you can dice for a stew, any you can do for stroganoff or you can just bang it all in for mincing for burgers sausages lasagnas ragus whatever your heart desires so just take your time go through it and then we can have a look at what we got out of this set of haunches Okay then, not a bad haul at all from those two legs. So starting here then, we got all our minced trim. A lovely little, I imagine about a pound of diced with casserole stews. The lovely top sides. We staked, ate gorgeous steaks. Those rumps I've left whole, you could roast them as mini roasting joints or cut them into steaks. Here we have that little salmon cut which could go with those, treat it as you would a steak. The one silver side we rolled, the other we cut in half for two parves. Put some colour on them in the pan, get them in the oven. Beautiful. Then we got our two thick flanks or football roasts and then two glorious shanks at the end. It really is amazing what you can get out of your two haunches with just a little bit of time, a little bit of care. So I hope you found that useful and see you again.
take care.